that's the special thing about Le Mans. There is no easy part. I think you can talk about every corner where many cars crash. My name is Neil Johnny. I'm a Porsche factory driver. When you start, obviously it's all tight, but you don't want to crash lap one because it's a 24 hour race. Okay, if you lose a position, you lose a position, but yet still everyone attacks kind of. You're 50-50, how much do I attack? How much do I go along with the game? It's very physical to drive at Le Mans. The maximum you're allowed to do is four hours. And it, it happens quite often that uh, we as a driver are four hours in there and that feels long and hard. So we are heading onto the main straight, start finish line, and then we have a long right-hander uphill leading into the famous Dunlop chicane. On that long right-hander, you can get a little loose on the rear. You see many cars going off in the, on the right side into the barriers so many times. That's the special thing about Le Mans. There is no easy part. I think some parts are just more dangerous to crash and other parts are just time costly. It's quite a tricky chicane because you have to take a lot of speed in and then you go down the hill into what's called Forêt de Laes which is kind of like a roller coaster because it's up, down, a little bit bang. And then Terre Rouge, getting on the curb wide and then you come on to the very famous Les Hunaudières uh, straights where you reach the top speeds of uh, 350 kph. Here you can see uh, I'm getting some draft from an LMP2 car and now we'll just enter into the first chicane. Those chicanes were added later on in the history of Le Mans uh, because this long straight was just too quick, so they added those. You arrive at the chicane with not so hot brakes. The brakes cool down and you have to basically come down into second gear. It's very tricky to, to get your brake points right. It's important again here to get a very good exit go wide, take the speed onto the next long straight. And then we come to the next chicane. You can see I use all the road on the exit, I even go a bit wide. Again, take the speed, it goes a bit up. Here is the famous part where the Mercedes took off in the 90s. Go. Oh my God, oh my God, the Mercedes has taken off. So now we are at the furthest part of the track um, at Mulsan. This is a very slow 90 degree right-hander. And quite special here is sometimes you have completely different weather down here than on the start-finish line. That is why this corner, sometimes you also have spotters out there who tell us what weather we have down there. That's the speciality about Le Mans. The track is so big that you don't know if you have everywhere the same weather. Uh, the other thing that is tricky, it, during the day, obviously, it's warm most of the time because it's summer in France. Uh, but comes night, it gets really cold. And it's very tricky to keep the tires up to temperature. So sometimes you're just outside of the tire temp window and you slide around and it's, it's super tricky and you lose a lot of lap time. One lap takes uh, 3 minutes 20 in average. You can lose 2-3 seconds very easy when the tires are not there. It's uh, super important that you have uh, brake markers at night. So like a 100 meter board or a curve because obviously you don't always see the corner where you have to turn in but you, because you're arriving at 360 kph you need to brake before you see the corner. see on the exit, take the full curve and you really try to launch all this for this long straight to take as much speed as you can. Then we come into a very quick right-hander, Indy 1, Indianapolis and then in, into Indy 2. Why are they called Indy 1 and Indy 2? It's because they're banked. Both of those corners are highly banked and the most banked corners on this track so you really try to dig into that and use it 
to go quicker through the corner. We are now at Arnaj, which is the slowest point of the track. Also here again, just a few little kinks, but with track it can get tricky. And then we come into the famous Porsche corner, it's super quick. It's a section where it's all in fifth or sixth gear. So that means that's all way above 220, 30 kph. Entering the Porsche corners, uh, we pull up to 5G laterally. So you really need to train your neck for those corners. And you have to be so precise because if you miss one turning at that speed, you travel so many meters within one second, you're in trouble. We go left into carding. It's called carding actually, because on the right side, if you would go off there, you would end up on the go-kart track. And it's quite a tricky corner because that's actually one of the few corners that is off camber. The indie corners are banked, so we can dig in, but this one is off camber, means we just slide off and you really have to make sure you get the line there nicely. And we get to those left-right kinks to the four chicane. On the right side, on the entry of the four chicane, is the pit entry. That's basically your breaking point, because at night, this is a difficult part, because it's very dark there, and you don't see the entrance where you have to turn in for the four chicane. So you, you try to look for the curbs on the right side, you wait, you wait, then you see them, you break. It should work out. You just need to make sure you break hard enough, obviously. We go into the last chicane, huge curbs there, and easy to break the car there, so you just try to be smooth and try to finish that lap nicely. I started on pole. We lost the lead in the beginning. We had an issue on the first pit stop with the screws didn't come off, the tires didn't come off. So we lost a lot of lap time, but then we came back at night. But then there was a lot of yellow phases during the race because there were a lot of crashes at night. And we lost a lot of lap time in those compared to the Toyota, which was at that time our main competitor. We caught back up and then we were leading then they were leading again. And then we turn into the last half an hour. We are 20 seconds back, but closing in every lap. I was driving then at the end, and then uh, 10 minutes before the end, I have a puncture front right. I'm like, oh no, that's it, the race is gone. So I went in, changed tire, came back out. Well, we were a minute something behind, and I was like, okay, that was bad luck. Then I hear on the radio my engineer telling me, hey, Neil, keep pushing, keep pushing, the Toyota is getting slow. Push, push, push. Last lap, he had an issue with the engine or turbo. They had to stop on the main straight. So I took the lead back, finished the lap and won Le Mans. The Hollywood couldn't write it any more better and we wouldn't believe the film if it was. The film would say like, oh, how fake is that? It's the proof why Le Mans is so special. Le Mans lets you win. You cannot win Le Mans. You cannot win that race. That race chooses its winner and it has proven over and over again.